Good afternoon. Thanks for joining me on another IG Live. It's been a couple of weeks since we've been together. I didn't receive any questions um, ahead of time, so we'll take questions as they come in. I will just make a few comments before I do that. Um, of course, we've had a momentous occasion since the last time we had an Instagram Live session. We've had an election, and now we know the results of that election. And uh, whichever side uh, of that you find yourself, I think we probably all agree that it's really great that we've been through it. We haven't had, although there's been lots of, uh, lots of controversy and a lot of uh, activity on social media for and against the outcome, we so far haven't seen the worst of what was projected could happen. And to me, that says that despite all the very strong feelings on both sides of this election, there is a, a deep underlying commitment to the process and a sense that the process needs to be carried out. So uh, it, it, as we know, it's going to, going to be continuing for some time until it's officially certified, but we know the results. And I think uh, the, the, we feel pretty certain those won't change. And that puts us into a new period of time. I just sent out a message to the campus community about that. And I really think that uh, the points that I made in that communication, I, I think are really important for us all to think about. And I, I'm, I will be really interested to see what our voting percentage was within Lehman College students. We've usually been ahead of the national average by quite a bit, and I expect that could well be the case again. I hope that's true. But for certain, voting and other forms of civic engagement are really, really critical for us. Uh, that's what really sustains us. So um, it was good to see such a great turnout. And I think in the future, hopefully we'll sustain that and keep that level of engagement. What I really, one of the main messages that I put in that message to the community is that the necessity of, of engagement that I think we've learned a lot more about, right, in the last few years, that we can't assume that because we've set up the structures of a democratic system that they will function unless we really defend them and make sure that they are. So I think that we're, we're in a new era where there will be changes in, in tone uh, from the top, and hopefully there will eventually be some changes in the tone of the conversation that's happening on a one-on-one -on -one level, or maybe actually, I just hope there'll be some conversations because I think we've, we've really been missing those and uh, we've all been kind of living in our bubbles. And while that is always a really comfortable place to be, not very productive if we want to have a kind of dialogue that, that moves us forward. Anyway, it's great to have the election behind us, and uh, hopefully now we're going to see some other things begin to get behind us too. I don't know if you noticed today, but Pfizer announced that they're now well along in their phase three, and they have found so far that their vaccine is 90% effective. That is far more than what uh, Anthony Fauci, Dr. Fauci said would be needed. He said even if we had a 50 to 60% effectiveness that would help. But having a vaccine that's 90, uh, that's very close to something like a measles vaccine, which is about 93%, which is very high. So if that holds out and they seem confident they're now submitting that to peer review. If that holds out, then we really have hope on the horizon. And uh, if, if they're able to now roll out doses at the rate of, I think they said seven to eight million a week, starting around maybe the first of the year, then we really have a chance of having a widely immunized population in the spring and going into the summer. That would, of course, be such great news for, for all of us. I don't know what that would mean for the spring term. I don't think it would really probably impact it, but uh, we'll see because um, we've had a lot of surprises that have come our way and we will not complain if uh, it, it turns out that the vaccine uh, gets rolled out faster, and hopefully, uh, despite 
a lot of agitation around the vaccine being unsafe and people saying they won't be immunized. Hopefully we will. And hopefully we'll do that in great numbers. And that following that, we'll actually be looking at COVID-19 as by and large something that maybe we'll still be dealing with in one way or another, but for the most part is behind us. And wow, wouldn't that be amazing? So let's all hope. And, um, and I guess we really, we have to really congratulate uh, those in the biomedical community and, and those companies that have worked on a vaccine the, about the fastest that a vaccine has been developed for a major disease up to now is about four years. So if you imagine that we might have a vaccine in less than a year, that's proven to be effective. I mean, think about that, cutting the time in one fourth and that cutting the best time in one fourth. So anyway, um, that's, um, that's on a couple of fronts where I think we now can feel good and we can feel like we maybe are truly rounding some bends that will allow us to get back and focus on some other things that we know are important and have been important. Number one is just education at Lehman College. And we have kept it going, that's for sure. And everybody has done what they needed to do to keep that moving, whether it's services to students, whether it's offices uh, that keep the campus moving, students managing to do their courses despite difficult circumstances, faculty members working really hard to do their courses at a distance for all those things, but we have kept it going. And, uh, and if we can then move ourselves back on campus, certainly at least feel like by the fall we can do that, uh, we certainly will have come through something major and we'll come out, we will be better when we come out the other side. We've learned a lot. We're going to take those lessons with us. And uh, I think, I'm sure that all of us can think of things that we have learned that we didn't know capabilities have been found that we didn't think we had and we'll keep using those and we will we will those will enhance what we're able to do even though we'll at some point be able to be fully back on campus and in person so uh, i think that's all very hopeful and you know on a bright and sunny fall day which is warmer than it really should be but i have to say that i'm enjoying it just the same um, that's a really good thought to have. So still waiting to see if we get any questions coming in. I imagine that uh, what you are thinking, if you did see the vaccine announcement this morning from Pfizer, you are thinking, well, is that gonna impact the spring term? And we'll just have to see, we don't know. Um, and you know, a lot of other questions that follow that. When could we have events? What would that mean about graduation again? We have to just see. We really don't know. We'll wait and see. But I'm guessing that this announcement from Pfizer, since they're submitting this data for re peer review, peer scientific review, is pretty solid. And uh, and if it, it meets the peer review without major criticisms, might lead fairly fairly quickly. In fact, they've already applied for a, an emergency uh, permission, I guess it would be called, to proceed with um, manufacturing and maybe even distribution. So uh, it's, uh, that's just great news. Really the best news uh, that we've had on the, on the pandemic front for a very long time. Of course, we know that we're in a very tough time and it's rising and certainly rising in New York State and much more in other places. And so as much as we can feel good about a coming vaccine, we've got to be super careful because um, if you remember from what happened in late February and March, the vaccine was distributed and spreading, not the vaccine, the virus was spreading through the community a long time, weeks before we knew it. And uh, only three weeks, four weeks later did we realize exactly how much it had spread. We have that same possibility now and going into the winter and to some degree that may be happening so i just want to caution all of us 
to remain vigilant. I keep reminding myself, don't forget that mask. And um, don't forget to keep those hands washed and to keep the, the hand sanitizer nearby at all times and to watch distance. And even outdoors, watch your distance. Be careful. Yeah. We've learned that we can do a lot. We can, we can actually really, um, we can actually do things maybe initially we didn't think we can do as long as we're careful, but we've got to continue to be careful. And, and if we do that, then, uh, then I think we're going to be okay. Most of us are going to be fine. And, um, but it's, it's a matter of vigilance. It's going to remain that way all the way through this calendar year and, and well into the spring and probably till summer. We're going to continue to need to exercise that same level of care and uh, not being in small spaces uh, with, with other people that we haven't been around, uh, wearing masks all the time. And, you know, one of the things about mask wearing, there's been, like everything else about this pandemic, there's been a lot of misinformation and often misinformation that's been spread by people that you would think would not do that. People who are prominent, people who have large public followings, but still will say things. Uh, Rand Paul um, recently was talking about a research that showed that masks were ineffective. Um, that research is three years old, by the way, and that research really did not show that. Um, what it showed is a comparison of an N95 mask in a clinical setting with a cloth mask. And not surprisingly, the cloth, the cloth mask is not nearly as good as an N95 mask in protecting the wearer. But really, what the cloth mask is doing is protecting other people. It's not protecting the wearer nearer, nearly as much as it is other people. And so again, I think that's just something we have to keep remembering is I'm wearing this mask because I care about you. Uh, yes, I care about myself and I hope you'll also wear one and you'll care about me and you'll protect me. But it really is, I'm wearing this mask because I, am t I care about you and I don't want you to become infected. So that's what it is. And, and I, I think that as a, a group of individuals that are part of Lehman College, I think we get that. I think we understand that. So um, let's keep doing it. So here's a question. Will CUNY, that is Lehman, continue to, pro to provide online distance learning after the pandemic for its full-time working evening and weekend students? Wow, I, I love that question. That is That question goes right to the heart of what I was mentioning earlier, which is what are we gonna take out of this that we can use going forward? You know, one of the things that we had been discussing, in fact, we had begun an initiative way back in the fall uh, of 2019, long before we any of us heard about SARS-CoV-2. We had begun an initiative that we've begun to call Lehman Extension, and we are now developing we're very far along and, and mapping out how this might go. But it is entirely geared to the idea that we have so many students and so many potential students at Lehman College who just can't take classes during the day, during the time when most of our classes are offered. Most of our classes are offered Monday through Thursday, really between 9 and 10 in the morning, until about four to five in the afternoon. We do have some evening classes, but it really falls off in the evening. And Fridays, there generally are very few classes. But we know that that leaves out so many students and students often have trouble finishing their degrees because the classes and critical classes they may need just aren't offered when they can take them because they work and they have other obligations. So we've begun discussing and we're very far along in mapping out this initiative, which would bring programs to the time slots and to a delivery mode that they could be completed by students who could never come to class on a Monday through Thursday or Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. time period. We think that is very important for our current students. We think it's important for future students of Lehman College. We think that the reality is, we know the reality is that so many of our students work and, and not all those working hours are during kind of normal business hours, but many of them are and need the flexibility 
to be able to complete a degree, a degree and continue to work. So yes, we have learned a lot during this pandemic about how to offer distance education. Uh, all of our faculty have learned a whole lot more about it. That puts us in a much better position to identify programs where there's a lot of demand and that could be then fully delivered uh, outside of the normal business hours and to some degree hybrid and online. Probably not entirely hybrid and not entirely online. Some classes could be Saturdays, some could be Sundays, some could be evenings, but they would be offered in time slots that would make them much more available to a wider group of students. So yes, um, I think we're going to take what we're learning now and we're going to use it as we map that initiative because it will help us. You know, there's been concern raised that we're going to use this time now to essentially convert our entire curriculum to online, which is not at all the case. Uh, when we're able to, we're going to have in-person classes to the degree that we can or to the degree that really works best for our students and for learning. But maybe we have learned that there are a lot of classes that can work very well in a hybrid format where you come to class one day a week or two days and then the rest of the time it's online when you can make it work for you in terms of the hours that you have available. So uh, I think Lehman College has, has always been uh, a place where we've really valued our relationships between faculty members and students and where in-person instruction is really important. That's going to remain the case. But there are, just, there are these other ways that we can still have that, but broaden the accessibility of our curriculum to more students. And that we will carry. We're going we're gonna to take that out of uh, this experience. Question of whether there will be any classes held face-to-face -face in the spring. I think the answer to that is we don't know. But again, until we know that the risk of viral transmission is very, very low, we will have most of our classes online. So that uh, could mean that we can do a few more classes face-to-face. -face. If we learn from what we've done in the fall and find there are ways we can do that safely and add a few more face-to-face cl -face classes, that would be terrific if we can. But uh, from what I'm reading and what I've just talked about, in this uh, live session, we will not have uh, anywhere near the number of people vaccinated at the beginning of the spring term that we would need to have to do, to do a lot of classes in person. Because remember, we have to have the whole population immunized to a fairly high degree before transmission no longer becomes such a problem. And um, yes, here's a comment. I miss the concert at, at concerts at Lehman, and that's for sure. That so many people have missed the concerts and the theater and the dance and all the performing arts, plus other things that, that we always have as a normal part of our, our year at the college. We've all missed those terribly. And uh, it's great that we've been able to have substitutes in terms of online concerts and and get-togethers, but we all know that's not the same as being in the room with live performers and being able to respond like that. It's just not a replacement. It's, it's a substitute that uh, I'm glad we've had it. It's something. It's definitely something, but it's, it's not what we've all been missing. So yes, uh, let's hope that by next fall we're in a position where we'll be able to do that again, and I, I think it's sounding hopeful. One of the things that there's a comment here about uh, what Coloma has been has just been saying um, about opening up New York, and um, and um, I it, you know my read on the governor's approach is that it's been quite consistent, and that um, despite the fact that it's it's really hurt the economy and so many people have lost jobs and are in difficult situations, that the priority has been to try to control the pandemic 
so that we can come back. And uh, I'm anticipating that will continue to be the case, even though uh, you know, there, we will have a change in the federal administration. What we really hope is with that change that the Congress will now see fit to pass a stimulus package, which we are desperately going to need, that will not only fund uh, the areas of health that are part of that, but also municipal and state governments, higher education, um, K through 12, pre-K through 12 education, um, all places where there's a desperate need for support because there's so much employment and so much opportunity that comes out of those sectors. So uh, I think that, I mean, we haven't really heard much discussion about the stimulus package since the election, but uh, no doubt that's going to be coming back uh, up on the agenda and we're going to see some discussion about it. The question again about coming on campus, um, since uh, the FDA or since there's a chance that um, the vaccine will become available again, becoming available is the beginning, but it is not it's not the point at which we are any, in any better shape than when we didn't have a vaccine. The only time we're eventually in better shape is when enough people are vaccinated that uh, transmission within the community is stopped. We're a long ways from that yet. So although we can be hopeful, uh, we can't jump the gun because uh, there's a lot that remains to be done. First of all, we've got to confirm that those findings are really right, uh, that the phase three study that Pfizer has done is legitimate and that other experts look at it and agree that it's correct. Uh, and that's a very important step because we've seen lots of false starts before when uh, we become overly optimistic and somebody gets a little ahead of it in terms of announcing that we have something that we don't. But uh, let's assume that, you know, even if we do know uh, or do, do think that uh, Pfizer has now achieved 90% efficacy, uh, it's going to take, you think about the logistics of getting all of us vaccinated and uh, to the point where we're confident that we can come onto campus and that there won't be transmission, that's going to be, uh, it's going to take months to get to that point. Just the logistics of that are pretty daunting. And, and again, we have to we have to have a very large percentage of the population agreeing to be vaccinated. And so, so that's important. And the uh, point being made here that there, we have a number of majors that require internships, whether it's in nursing or in social work, uh, education, um, in class teaching as part of the requirement for graduation. All of these have really been terribly impacted by the pandemic and it's made it extremely difficult and impossible in most cases to do these things. Uh, whether or not there will be a possibility in the spring to have more of those, we'll just have to see. Um, it would be great if we could because I know that's been a real hardship because it's been a huge impediment for students, particularly those that are nearing graduation and needing to complete those requirements uh, as a part of their degree. We haven't heard, I haven't seen any uh, other information coming out about internships and, and that is probably something we won't really know about very much until we get farther into the fall and close to the first of the year. Then I expect we will be, uh, we will be seeing maybe some possibilities, but, but uh, we'll just have to wait and see. I think we're all going to be so anxious to, to move beyond the pandemic that we're going to be hanging on every piece of news that we can get that tells us that we are in fact doing that. And, uh, you know, I'll, I'll be right there with you hanging on and, and hoping to see some other signs. But I think, you know, we also just have to, we have to factor into our expectations the reality because we know how long 
uh, it's going to take uh, even the population of the Bronx, which is 1.4 million people, or New York City, that's 8 million people. If you think about it, that, you know, maybe what, 10 or 15, maybe at the upper end, 20, 25% of people have been exposed to SARS-CoV-2, that leaves a very, very many people yet to be vaccinated. So that will take time. And we're probably talking the need for another 6 million people uh, in the Bronx. It, it may be, what, a million people or so that need to be vaccinated. So, um, so let's, you know, let's hang in there, support each other, try to be patient. We will get there. Here's an interesting question that I'm not sure I know the answer to. Are there any supplemental child care grants for parents who use the daycare facility on campus? There have been, um, there have been some su extra supports. And as I recall, the, uh, the, the latest stimulus package in Congress did have funding for, to support daycare facilities. Uh, if I'm right about that, let's hope when that when that finally passes that there will be support because that would be terrific for many families who are dependent on daycare centers so that the parents can work. So I, I do recall that that was in that package and so uh, let's hope that we get that. So a question here about whether there will be another live uh, session um, for students and staff to ask questions. And yes, there will be, uh, there will be another uh, President's Live briefing that will be coming up. You know, that's a little bit different format than this. And we'll do that soon. And so just watch. You'll get an email that will announce the time. And again, um, let me encourage you to, I'm getting lots of really good questions. And I'm, let me encourage you to send in questions that you think of ahead of time, you can send them to president.lemons at lehman.cuny.edu. And if you do that, um, then we can be sure, particularly if it's a very specific question, that uh, there's time to really dig up the specifics that are you want for an answer. So, um, so do that, think about it. Um, you can send that email anytime. And at, at that point, we will, then we'll put it on the list of things that we're going to talk about uh, either in another Instagram live session or in the president's live briefing. So between these, they're happening just about every week, um, one or the other. So yeah, definitely encourage you to do that. I think it's really important. It's important for me to hear your questions, know what you're thinking about, uh, because it, it helps me to prepare for these sessions. And it also it keeps me aware of things that are issues that otherwise maybe I wouldn't know about. So, so please do that. Got just a, a couple of minutes left, maybe one minute left, but uh, there's a question here. And this is an example of a really specific question that we'll try to answer um, either uh, through an email or the next briefing, which is going to be on um, the 19th. The next live briefing will be on the 19th at 2.30. But the question is, is there a way to do work study remotely? And I, I think the answer to that is yes, there is. Uh, and I think that has been happening. But one of the things that would be great if we can open up more possibilities for that, because that is a really good source of employment for students. And um, of course, at this point, almost all of that really has to be done remotely. So it's a great question. And we will, um, we'll think about that more and see if there, there are more details that we can provide about what those possibilities might be. But, uh, but definitely it is happening and uh, it's been happening really since March, since all, all through the time that we've been doing distance learning. So uh, that is the, the time that we've got allotted for this session. So again, I want to thank you for tuning in and um, Hope to see you at an, another Instagram live session or at a president's live briefing. Have a good afternoon. Pop your head out. Take in a little bit of sunshine today. Uh, we aren't going to have too many se more 70 degree days until uh, well into next to the spring of 21. So 
let's try to get a little bit of that soaked up and stored up for the winter.